the five new features we're going to discuss in this segment are classic mode, resistance curves, waveform tracking, history file, and connectivity. Okay, let's check out some of these ExoTrainer features, starting with classic mode. Okay, here is our ExoTrainer. This is an alpha model, and we've got it mounted to an aluminum frame right behind it there. So let's go ahead and talk about this classic mode thing, and that's going to be able to be accessed by the flat curve, where we're only looking at one line. The important thing to remember with classic mode is that the tension in the cable is always going to be consistent through all four of your phases. Okay, let's talk about resistance curves. You can come down to the bottom of the screen here, give a tap, and you can select the curve type. Let's go with incline. So last time we were working with cable tension that was 20 pounds all of the time. So this time it's going to start at 20 pounds, but as I go through my concentric phase, it looks like it's going to increase to about 30 or 32 pounds. And then as I come back through my eccentric phase, it's going to be just the 20 pounds again. So let's try this out with our same triceps push down. Pull it to our beginning spot. Okay, here we go. Yep, that's heavier. And that's pretty normal. Yep, that gets much harder. And then that feels pretty normal. So let's see if I can produce the same waveform that I was trying to produce before because this incline curve on the concentric phase is really challenging my force production. My acceleration it's getting harder to accelerate this tension as I move through the range of motion so here we have another example of a exo trainer resistance curve this time it's going to be a decline resistance curve that's going to be that when I do my movement here it's going to start out fairly heavy but it's going to get easier as I get lower and it's going to be very easy to come back and then when I check in at my movement position oh boy that's really hard and then it becomes easier. And then I check out for my eccentric, 10 pound eccentric, starting from 30 down to 20 concentric and 10 pound eccentric. Watch what this does to my waveforms if I try to be consistent. Oh boy. I don't know what that was. <laughs> okay. Ooh, that's hard, okay. So another interesting feature about these resistance curves is that you can adjust the specific phase. So the P is for pull phase. That's what we were just using to go from 10 pounds up to 32 pounds over that range of motion there. We could also switch out our release or our eccentric phase and have it be such that it would go from 10 pounds at the beginning, concentric, through 32 pounds at the top, and then immediately switch over to 40 pounds at the beginning of the eccentric and finishing the eccentric at a load of 20. So this would be a very highly dynamic example of a resistance curve. Okay, this time let's use a traditional classic mode flat curve just at 10 pounds, and let's get our exo monitor running right out of the gate and let's talk about these waveforms. Waveform tracking with the EXO machine is very easy because as you come up to start your movement, it's gonna register where you begin and it's gonna register where you end. And then you can start to produce a waveform. And each one of these waveforms describes the quality of your movement through each one of your sets per repetition. So let's start in the isometric long Let's do a concentric. Let's do an isometric short. And then let's do an eccentric. And now let's try to have this whole repetition cadence happening in two second intervals. So like the plain vanilla repetition. So here we go, we'll start it on the next one. Ready, here we go. Concentric up for two seconds, hold for two seconds. Eccentric for two seconds, hold for two seconds. Concentric for two seconds, 
Isometric hold for two seconds. Eccentric. Oh, I was late on that one. Here we go. Here we go. Two, one, two, one. Oh, way too early that time. I guess I don't know how to counter it today. But these waveforms can ultimately be saved by the exo history file and recalled and overlapped on top of one another so you can monitor your efficiency over time. Okay, let's check out the EXO trainer history file. So the way I would activate this feature is I'm gonna perform a set. So I'm gonna go up here to the top and I will select a number of reps. Let's do five reps. And then I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna select my exercise. So I'm gonna tap the screen, tap exercise name. I'm gonna come up here and give it a name. We're gonna do the incline one that we did from before. So let's call it incline Try, press. Good, now we have an exercise name, incline, try, press. And we mean that in terms of the incline concentric curve right here. So as we go in to do our first rep, we're not gonna get much resistance. It's just gonna register where your initial and final positions are. So let's go ahead and take it up. Here we go. Let's go to the top and that's where I'll finish. It's gonna come back down, all right, and now I'm going to start producing these little hash marks at the top of the screen with each one of my repetitions. Oops, I got to get the monitor going. And those hash marks are going to be my repetition counts. They're also going to be a scalar determination of the quality of my wave. So as you can see, I had to jump into the screen there for a second and I had a big mess up, certainly on my third one. But it automatically saved those five repetitions that I did. So now when I come over here, I can say, let's reset the cable and let's just click history. And there's the curve that I used, there's the date, and here's the movement that I did, the incline tri press and all the metrics that come with it. I can select it and say, let's just redo selected and pick right up where I left off next time. With the EXO UI Active, we wanted to give you the most sophisticated biofeedback training experience possible through the use of our resistance curves and waveform tracking. But if while you're training and you still wanna feel a little more traditional, these interfaces can individually be deactivated just by tapping on the eyeball icon. So now you could use the mirror as more of just a traditional reflection of your performance. You could also come down here And reduce that one just back to being able to see your dot moving but without actually getting all of that data and when you're ready to have it back tap the eyeball tap the eyeball and you're right back to the XO UI to go from the XO UI just straight to a regular functional mirror you would just tap the white dot icon. And now you've got the smart mirror. Tap the screen again to reactivate the XO UI. The XO Trainer device class provides legacy for time-honored principles of athletic performance training and the capability to embrace a new set of differentiating features. For more information, check us out.